Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church here in Galesburg. I am so happy that you are worshiping with us today. This is God's house. We are in the presence of the holy. Let us worship together. Please join me now in the call to worship. As early followers of Jesus gathered for fellowship and worship, praying and singing and reading the scriptures, so we gather in our homes this morning. We read in Acts that the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, one heart, one soul. They shared everything, everything they owned, everything they had. God's grace was at work in them, powerfully at work within them all. There was not a needy person among them. May it be so for us as well, this day and always. as I do each Sunday, I light this candle in honor of each one of you, recognizing that although we are worshiping from a physical distance, we are still united in the spirit and love and light of Christ. Friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you to greet one another with a sign of peace. Leave a comment, give a like, give a heart, text a friend, say a prayer for one another, and know that the peace of God is with you always now and forevermore. Amen.
Our scripture reading today comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. Listen now for God's word. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as had any need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is God's word for us today. Today's message is all about share the wealth. Here we are, and we're talking about how to be a first century church in a 21st century world, recognizing that we cannot go back 2,000 years in history. We recognize that there are some things that are simply not going to happen. Like friends, today as we talk about sharing the wealth, I do not expect you to sell your homes and come take up residence here in the sanctuary and live all together. I don't expect that. But there is still great truth in what the disciples and those early believers did. They sold everything that they had so that no one would have need. You have to think that most of these early apostles, these early believers, came from the bottom of society. After all, Jesus came and preached to the outcast among them. Jesus came for the lost and the least and the lowly. And those are the ones who start the foundation of the church. Those are the ones that the church is built upon. And those are the ones who aren't going to have much of anything. I mean, last week we talked about Peter at the gate looking at a man and saying, I don't have any silver or gold, but I can heal you in the name of Jesus Christ. And most likely the man who was healed became a believer, but the man who was healed is coming with nothing. And Peter has nothing. He's given it all up. He gave it up three, four, five years before when Jesus first appeared to him and said, Peter, come follow me and I will make you fish for people. They don't have much of anything. But what they know is that it is an injustice for anyone to have need. Not only is it horrible, not only should we help people because that's what Jesus would want us to do, we also have to recognize that people having need in our society is a sign that there is something wrong in our society. And as the disciples were trying to change the world one person at a time, as they were trying to bring God's kingdom one person at a time, They also recognized that they had to meet the needs of those they were welcoming in. They had to meet the needs of the lost and the lowly who were finding hope and purpose and a place and a home in that early church. We cannot be the church if people have need among us. There is no point to telling people about Jesus Christ when the person we are telling is starving. When they have no roof over their head, when they don't have clean water to drink, there is no purpose in telling them Jesus loves you and then walking away. The way that we show Jesus loves you is to make sure that people have a food and clean water and a house over to live in and clothes that fit and an education. These are the ways that we make sure people recognize Jesus loves you. 
And so the early believers depended upon those who had more to give more. So those who had land, those who had houses, those who were lucky enough to own something, gave it all so that those with nothing would have everything that they needed. It's this idea of radical generosity. That if I have more than my neighbor, if my neighbor has nothing and I have more, I get to share with my neighbor and then we all are working from the same place. If my neighbor doesn't have a loaf of bread and I have a full loaf of bread and I give my neighbor half of my loaf of bread, then we both have bread. We can both make sandwiches. We can both have a meal together. That is what radical generosity looks like. Right after the passage that I read in Acts, there's going to be a couple, Ananias and his wife, Sapphira, and they're going to sell their fear their field. And then they look at the money that they have and they say, "Mm, let's keep a little bit back just for us, just for our benefit. Let's make sure that we have a little bit more than everyone else in the community. And they're called out on their lie by Peter. It's not so much that they didn't give everything, it's that they lied about what they were willing to give. We cannot lie about what we are willing to give. We sing the song, take my life, Lord, take my silver and my gold, take everything that I have, take all that I am, God, but do we mean it? When our neighbor really has need, do we mean it? In this society, we see the stark difference between the haves and the have-nots. Income inequality is getting worse, not better. And part of sharing the wealth is working for justice. Recognizing that there is no reason that we should have and have and have and have some more while others work two, three jobs and can barely afford rent and food and are struggling to keep their families together and their families are going to go and end up in this cycle of ongoing poverty and no one and no one is really able ever to scrabble out of it and that is the injustice that we face in our 21st century church. There was no such thing really in Jesus' day as the middle class. The middle class came about in the Industrial Revolution. The middle class grew up as we learned technology and science and used them for profit gain. And so in our world, we are still fighting income inequality. In our world, we are still fighting the injustice of those who have versus those who have not. In our society, we are still fighting this mindset that you have to be able to afford to live. And that is what the disciples and those early apostles in the first church were totally against. Friends, we should not have to be able to afford to live in order to survive. We should be able to know that we have food and a shelter, clean water, clean clothes, even if we can't afford them, even if we're one that has nothing. In a just society, we say that you are beloved because you are a child of God, not because you have earned your place in the kingdom, but because God's grace is sufficient for you. 
And so we in the 21st century church get to be like the first century church and saying, you don't have to afford your seat here. You don't have to earn your seat here. You don't have to pay for your seat in the church. It is given to you. And what's more, we will give you what you need to survive, to live, to thrive. So that as you have what you need, as your needs are met, you are free to worship the living God. You're not scrounging every day to find food. You're not scrounging every day trying to make sure that the rent is going to be paid this month and the lights are going to stay on and you're going to have heat in the winter. That's taken care of because you are worthy of life. You are worthy of a basic level of living. So share the wealth. That's the answer. It's been the answer since the first century church, and even in our 21st century church, it is still the answer. Share the wealth and recognize that income inequality, seeing people who are starving while we have so much, is an injustice, that we are doing our neighbors a disservice, that we are not living into God's vision for our world. Share the wealth, friends. If you have more than enough, give some away and recognize that God is meeting our needs. And one of the ways God does it is through us. Amen. Let us pray. Today, O God, we are reminded by your holy word of what people of faith are like. We are reminded of their joy and trust in you. We are reminded of how they care for one another and reach out to help their siblings in faith. We are reminded of how your presence in their lives conquers their doubts and fears. Lord, work strongly in us and confirm our lives to the example of Jesus and all of those with a living faith. Help us walk in your glorious light and rejoice in your saving truth. Gracious God, help us show your present reality to all those around us who dwell in fear and sadness. Help us and the people of Christ everywhere to bring comfort to those who grieve, strength to those who are ill, and blessings to all those who are in need. Lord, hear our prayers for those in special need of your presence this day. We ask that your spirit may hold those we name before you in the silence of our hearts, that your son might visit them and speak a word of healing that your servants in this world might bring to them your comfort and your grace. We thank you, O God, for your power and presence in our lives. Make us known as a people who share that power and presence, so that the glory we intend to give unto you may be given by all, and so that our joy may be complete in Christ Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all I have in you is more than Sacrifice of greatest price. Still more awesome than I know. You're the coming king. You are everything. Still more awesome than I know. All of you is more than enough. Satisfy me with your love and all I have in you, and all I have in you, and all I have in you is more than enough. has shown you what is good and what does the Lord require of you to do justice to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God and may the grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord amen